Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Character Witness. So, what I'm going to start doing is every five or so episodes, I'm going to do a Bullywug bonus. And the reason why it's called Bullywug is because the first one deals with um, frog people. Now, frogs are cool in real life. Some people don't like them because they look slimy, but frogs are good people, in my opinion. Um, and I think I'll just call the entire version of this Bullywug, just because the inaugural episode is about frog people. And just to honour frogs, because frogs are cool. So, there are numerous frog races within D&D already, um, most notably being the Bullywug. And I believe they're neutral evil, so... And they're not really a player race. They can be homebrewed, like what we're going to do today. And so let's get right into it. So if you're watching the video version of the podcast, I've got a picture of what is traditionally a bullywug on the screen. Um, there's just a, a portly little biped frog person. Um, they live in swampy areas, much like real frogs and toads seem to thrive in that area. And they're basically painted as savages and stuff. Because I imagine they're a race that isn't as developed in the old brain as most of others. And that's not fair, because frogs are cool. And this is a fantasy setting, and they should be able to do whatever they want. Just like you should be able to do whatever you want to, uh, as long as you're not hurting anyone. So, yeah. so what I did, um, I'm going to be starting with uh, a campaign with my beautiful wife. And she's going to be DMing. And I asked if I could be a frog person. And she said that was fine. But because frogs aren't player uh, characters, I saw how to workshop it, ran some things by her, and we'll get into later what I based it on. We'll look at the character sheet, the stats and such. But I think w when I first started out trying to make this character, I based him heavily on one of my favourite Marvel characters of all time, Frogman. Now, Frogman, otherwise known as Eugene, is a lovable fella. And while he is a superhero, and he was part of the Avengers Initiative for a very short time, he's not that impressive. His only power is he can jump real high. And, I mean, he's, he's proficient enough in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He once saved um, Captain Marvel's life, uh, along with Hawkeye. So, that was cool. He, he's, he's a good lad. But what I like about um, Frogman in particular is he looks so ludicrous. He's a frog person. And... And it's just hilarious to me that this guy is running around dressed as a frog. And that's his whole superhero thing. He's had a few run-ins with uh, Spider-Man, as you can expect. He's a colourful character on the streets of New York. So Spider-Man, obviously, will have encountered him every now and then. And I just like his can-do attitude. He's well away. He's out of his depth. He's not built like a brick shithouse, like a regular superhero. He's just got a regular dad bod. And he's just trying his best. And he's got a, a really positive and bright uh, air about him. And I really like that because he's just an everyman trying to do his best dressed as a frog. Now, on a small tangent, there is another frog character. Um, if you've ever seen Adult Swim's Venture Brothers, you'll know that one of the villains... Um, well, he's not one of the villains. He's sort of like a background villain who like comes in for cameos every now and then. Um, is called Brick Frog. Now, Brick Frog is an amazing concept. He's basically an evil version of Frogman, and instead of jumping real high, he just has a messenger bag full of bricks, like regular building bricks that he throws at people. And as ludicrous as the concept is, that's actually pretty terrifying. Like, a brick will, if it won't at least give you a concussion, it could mash your head, pop it like a watermelon, like, and this guy's running around just as a frog, just lobbing them at people. And he always looks tired for some reason. He's always got like big bags under his eyes. Maybe because he, he doesn't have a job and he just runs around hauling bricks. I mean, you know, who am I to judge? So, as we go on, we're going to look at the sort of what a bullywug is currently in d and I've got it on the screen if you're watching the video version of the podcast. But if not, I'll just read it out. So, you know, everyone's welcome. Um, so, yeah, as I suspected, neutral evil. Um, armor class, pretty regular 15 uh, hit points nothing to write home about um, their stats strength uh, an average of 13 dex average of 13 with modifiers uh, constitution 14 with modifiers their intelligence is like seven 
five to seven, which isn't great. Um, Wisdom's ten, which is fair for a for what the the rest of their stats are abysmal, but they seem to have gone easy on them on wisdom. And their charisma is obviously low because I gather they don't speak any language other than uh, frog or amphibian. Um, so let's have a look at their abilities. Oh, well, the language they speak, I've just read there, is Bullywug, which is the language of their species. And they have an ability to let them talk to frogs and toads of other sort of species. So that'd be useful living in a swamp. Um, so they're amphibious. They can breathe in air and in water, which is cool. Um, they've got Swamp Camouflage, which is an ability that um, gives them advantage on dexterity and stealth checks and swampy terrain. So, you know, home advantage and all that stuff. And Standing Leap, the Bullywug's long jump uh, is up to 20 feet and high jump is up to 10 feet with or without a running start. So, yeah, much like Marvel's own Frogman, they jump real high. As you can expect, because frogs jump real high. Uh, they've got stuff like multi-attack, bite, and they use spears traditionally in um, in the D&D monster manual. Um, but not really a fan of the spear for what I wanted to go on for my character. But yeah, so it's pretty simple. They're just basically swamp savages that look like frogs. So wanting to be a frog character, um, it didn't look re all that great for me. So, what I did was, I made a guy called Puddle Splash. Now, I think that's an adorable name for a frog boy. And you're more than welcome to disagree with me, but uh, I thought it was adorable because I wanted him to be likable. I didn't want him to be a mindless, um, aggressive swamp dweller, even though he does dwell in a swamp. So, I based his stats on a halfling, actually. Um, ran this by um, DM to make sure it was all cool. And it was because they're a similar height um, and some of their abilities and just the the sense of them seems to cross over quite well. I haven't borrowed too heavily from uh, halflings because there's some things that just don't correlate uh, with a frog person. So we'll take you through the stats. Uh, he's level 3 because we're going to be starting the campaign at level 3 just to give people a good mix of abilities. So I got strength 12 with a plus 1 modifier. So... You know, that's nice. Uh, he's not the strongest dude. Um, he's got strong back legs, obviously, for his jumps. But, you know, he's not He's not a, a class that will rely on strength. He's actually going to be a nature domain cleric. Because I wanted him to be um, a healer for the party. But I also wanted him to be very much connected to his swampy beginnings. So he's nature domain. Um, dexterity is his, by far and away his highest stat. Because I wanted someone who could... It was true to like his frog character, like jumping about. And I think it'd be quite good once he gets the ball rolling in the campaign to be like a more mobile healer. He can just bounce around the battlefield, assisting people, which is nice. Uh, constitution, standard plus one. Always got to have a little bit of uh, health to your healer, make him more robust because they're going to be the ones keeping everyone alive. Intelligence, uh, I didn't put him as very intelligent um we'll go into why that is in his backstory and stuff not that he's stupid he's just not particularly learned um wisdom because he's a cleric that's his second highest stat so he can do uh magic and stuff like that and his charisma he's a frog person so he could be as charismatic as he likes but the world around him will probably look at him and go eh, slimy frog person but who knows i don't know what the dm has in mind for that people might love frog people in the world she's created and I've put him as chaotic good because I wanted him to be someone who means well but has no idea how the outside world outside of a swamp works. So he's going to be like falling over in social situations, being too loud when he shouldn't be and stuff like that. I just want him to be just a, a kind-hearted buffoon, uh, which is the archetype for most of my characters. Um, so we go to skills, animal handling, that just makes sense because he lives in a swamp and he can talk to frogs and toads because I did take that ability from the monster manual version because it just makes sense. Um, we go on to his insight just because of his wisdom and he's going to be a cleric so his insightfulness and sensing the nature of people will be very uh, useful. Stealth, obviously he's got that ability which I've also carried over from a bullywug um, to stealth and swamps and just like make himself sort of scarce when he needs to religion plus two for obvious reasons he's a cleric and nature obviously he's from the swamp and medicine so he's going to be doing all kinds of 
stuff with swamp, fungi, and healing people. So, uh, his armor class kept it at 15. Uh, There's nothing I particularly wanted to put on him that would raise that or anything. And I think it would have been overkill to make him a tank and have all that mobility from his dexterity because I don't want to make him some unstoppable juggernaut. And his current HP, I rolled for this. Um, got quite lucky on the rolls. It's not the best. I think the best I could have gotten was 27, 28. Somebody correct me if you need to. But I got 25, which is quite good for a level 3 character. And for his speed, we've got halflings have, um, don't have a lot of speed. But I thought because he's a frog and he's going to be jumping around, I give him like a sort of base speed of 40. Maybe that's a bit too high. It's sort of like a... A fast monk maybe that should be brought down to 30 35 i'll talk to the, the um dm about that and yeah he's a, he's a pretty good dude give him the hermit background obviously because he lives in a swamp okay so combat uh because he's a swampy character sort of jungle stuff like that i wanted to give him a blowgun but obviously if you've read the equipment section of the player's handbook uh blowguns do one hp of damage so we workshop something and just give it the same and damage as a short bow because it's his personal blowgun he's probably tweaked with it to make it more devastating got all kinds of swamp poison on it and shit like that and for his physical weapon i've put a sickle and that'll go into his background which we'll go into in a second because sickles are cool and i didn't want to change the uh, damage on the sickle because i didn't want to give him like excellent weapons to begin with because he's not some like well tooled out dude from a, an armory and he's not he doesn't live in a barracks he just lives in a swamp so we'll move on to his biography okay so i'll just read it out uh, just to give you a background of what i was going for so puddle splash grew up in a swampy home village with his family despite the usual aggressive nature of bullywogs his tribe have acclimated to life alongside other civilizations as their swamp is home to a large trade road used by common races like human gnomes and half orcs our exposure to other races and frequency of interactions has given puddle splash's tribe a good idea of modern technologies and society though they remain traditional they sometimes implement gnomish inventions to preserve their ecosystem now for that i wanted them to be very much i wanted them to stay in the swamp i didn't want to have that thing of like oh civilization is around the corner and it's much better than like swamp life because this like i wanted the character to like where he was from and that's that's something I like to have with all my characters because I myself in real life really like where I'm from. So I wanted him to um, appreciate where he's from and wanted to uh, have his tribe also be of that mindset. Like they're aware of the outside world and all the the advances in technology and they're happy to use them. They're not uh, they're not scared of technology, but they would rather preserve like their way of life, which is fine. Um, so Puddle Splash began his adult life as a fungus farmer, hence the sickle using his trusty sickle to carefully scrape fungus and moss from large trees on his family's farm. These fungus uh, and moss samples are used in his tribe's traditional mes uh, medicines and can also be sold to common races for research, herbalism, and even food ingredients for races like half orcs with stronger stomachs and resistances. While farming one day, Puddle Splash came across a glowing stone the team that silently called to him. This is when um, I wanted to tie in his clerical sort of background to him because... Um, I didn't want to make it so I'm like, oh, he's from the swamp, he's from a tribe, he's into voodoo and all that stuff. I want to avoid those tropes. Um, but when I go through reading this, you might find other tropes that I've used instead. Um, you know, corny things on my, my sort of wheelhouse. When he showed it to the village elder, she told him it was a fib stone. That's a play on amphibian because I'm very smart and cool. Uh, and that they choose a bully book every now and then um, to be a pillar of faith and goodness in the world. Wanting to know more, Puddle Splash took an internship at an enormous monastery in the closest city, learning the clerical arts. Though the gnomes did not worship the same deity they had created the Fibstone, it is said that the Toad God was a friend to all, including other gods. Because I wanted him to um, have his own like patron without the necromancy, the scary part. But um, and he, I wanted his god to be. I spoke with with the DM about this. I wanted his god to be like an ancient god, like older than most of the pantheon, but still. A, a good god nothing like contentious he's not trying to bring him forth from the rift to swallow all life just a very jovial and like happy thing because i wanted his i wanted his his whole character from top to bottom even the concepts that he follows to be all about optimism and just happiness and all that shit because i wanted him to be a nice guy um so yeah a jovial and prosperous god 
Uh, Puddle Splash has recently completed his studies and is ready to see the world, hoping to make his mark. Um, physical description, Puddle Splash is a lean bully rogue with large eyes, bottle green skin. He stands with a slight hunch owing to the shape of his body. He wears simple leather garments and a glowing holy stone around his neck, which is the Fib Stone. So, basically, I just set him up to be a happy-go-lucky guy. He's going to go around. He's not going to, like, try and convert people. He's just like, I am the chosen one of this ancient deity. I'm going to use his powers for good. Um, and it should be interesting because him having that sort of outlook on the world of, like, I'm going to do good, that there's no yes or no about it. I'm going to go out there and do good. And he's going to have to encounter people of different moral standings he's gonna have to encounter situations with gray areas and it's just gonna be one of those uh, classic conflicts of like this is good this is bad what is this weird in between i've never come across before uh and it could make him a little bit meaner it could make it could entrench him in his happiness we don't know so that should be interesting we'll go on to uh the spell book so we'll look at the spells that uh he knows and sort of like he gets some from his nature domain um and i'll go through my choices and such so he's got infestation virtue light and guidance uh one of the infestation part to be like back to his swampy beginnings is i wanted a theme to go through him like he's still very much a, a cleric but he can call upon like his abilities and his heritage um animal friendship speak with animals uh healing word cure wounds divine favor bane sort of like standard uh clerical stuff but with like tinges of like swamp flavor in there uh lesser restoration uh prayer of healing bark skin and spike growth again so he's got a lot of spells he's gonna be pretty useful i hope unless he gets clacked in the first mission but you know I'm, i've become quite attached to this character sheet that i've worked on for like a week and so i've got the notes and we'll look at the things that i've kept from uh sort of like him being a halfling template and also some of the bullywug stuff from the monster manual that i've kept so i've kept amphibious obviously because he's still a frog nothing about that's changed speak with frogs and toads you'd imagine he could um living in the swamp maybe if he was a city bullywug you might have forgotten but nope he very much lives within um the environment where he would be encountering these animals uh swamp camouflage i just thought that might be good to have just i know he's a cleric and he's not really um a stealth character like a rogue but i think on his home turf he should know how to keep himself preserved and it's not too um overpowered when you add it to the character because it's probably not often we're going to be in a swamp area um standing leap again frog guy uh silent speech um i think bullywugs in the i can't remember if it's bullywugs or halflings can speak telepathically to a certain extent and i thought that would be good but only between him and other bullywugs i didn't want to make it so he could just like talk to anyone because uh, that would be a bit overkill didn't want him to be a, a swiss army knife type character uh channel divinity charm plants and animals and uh, channel divinity turn undead so one he gets from his um nature domain clerics and the other one's just the standard cleric um channel divinity holy symbol uh, glowing fimstone so that just acts as his uh, holy symbol for when he's uh, casting spells and stuff and i've put nimble which is a trait from a halfling i believe and yeah he's a frog person he's bound to be nimble um so i thought I'd, I'd keep that um so yes i think that's everything that we've covered with young puddle splash here so yeah that, that'll be it for this bonus episode of character witness where you've just witnessed the character i've built this week um for an upcoming campaign uh, maybe I'll come back to this, give you an update at the start of another episode or at the end of another episode, uh, see how he went when the campaign gets rolling. Don't know when it's going to start, though. I believe um, Laura's still working out the world and stuff, but I'm very uh, excited to get it all done. So, yeah, that is Puddle Splash, and this has been another episode of Character Witness. Thanks for listening.